Thank you very much for that intro. Um, great to be here. Be here. Good morning um, and welcome. So apparently, mobile and digital, um, pretty hot topics at the moment. So I've been asked to share some of my experiences, um, particularly in using mobile in our digital transformation of Target Australia. Um, I really hope you sort of take away some nuggets, um, and you may find it useful. As, as far as I'm concerned, you know, the more organisations that are focusing on this just ridiculous area of growth, the better. You know, I think Australia has so much potential, and if we all pull together, you know, the rest of the world will soon be coming here to see how it's really done. So a little bit about our history. Um, certainly hasn't got the depth of innovation um, history that uh, we heard earlier on from Fidelity. But um, I arrived here about 18 months ago and uh, joined this retailer, which really is, it is steeped in history. You know, Target started with a drapery store in Geelong in 1926 um, by a couple of people, one called George Lindsay and Alex McKenzie. Um, so not quite as long a history as my previous company, Marks and Spencers, but um, you know, 90 years is pretty impressive. So it's always been about making fashion, style, and quality affordable. Um, but I think in those days, it was a little bit more straight talking. It was you know, half the price, twice the volume, and twice the turnover. I think at the time, George Lindsay could probably be credited with being the pioneer um, behind discounting retailing in Australia. So. Our customer, you know, we really want to appeal to the whole family, um, but we soon realised that it's actually mum that is in charge, um, not just of the household budget, but pretty much everything that happens at home. So our typical customer is a 44-year-old living with her husband and two children, probably at primary age. Um, she's paying off a mortgage, um, so tends to be working part time. And there's an average household income of around about $95,000, which is just slightly, high, uh, slightly above the um, Australian average. So she's part of uh, Generation X and was born um, in the 70s. Um, she grew up listening to Michael Jackson, ACDC, um, probably Wham and Madonna. In fact, I feel a bit like Madonna today with this one. Um, and she watched uh, films like Back to the Future, um, Grease and Ghostbusters. Um, I think it was interesting, she wore things like bell bottoms, chewed bubble gum, wore lycra, had leg warmers, um, loved a bit of taffeta, and don't forget those go-go t-shirts. Um, actually, on reflection, probably quite scarily, could be talking a bit about, about me, but um, that's probably a, a different story for another time. <laughs> so um, we continue to evolve, and um, our core purpose hasn't really changed fundamentally during the 90 years. Uh, our primary customer is still the same, um, although probably a very different beast. I shouldn't, probably shouldn't say that. Very different beast now. Um, her demands are massively different and, and probably even, say, massively more demanding. Um, but not until 2014 did Target really start to seriously move beyond the store environment um, to start developing an online business, which is actually pretty much when I arrived. So 2016, um, Target's got nearly 90 years' experience in store retailing and a couple of years in trading an online channel. So that's how rapid digital has arrived and how new it is to our history. So as we bring together um, digital and stores and start to create a much more engaging um, experience for our customers. Um, you know, we've redesigned a lot of our stores. If you go into some of our newer um, stores, you'll see this, that much clearer navigation, much better store layout. We've introduced things like cafes. You know, we're trying to induce, reduce the amount of range which is available on store, in store, and increase the range um, that's available online. And at the same time, significantly improving customer service both in store and online. So, lots of moving, a lot of moving parts, and we are constantly evolving. So, you know, we're we're on a journey like everybody else. Um, it has been a steep learning curve for Target. Um, not only has the business been in turnaround um, and having to transform how it operates as a traditional store-based retailer, this annoying POM keeps on saying, look, that's just not good enough. You know, we need to be future-proofing. Um, we need to be able to interact seamlessly across multiple ways uh, with our customer. Um, and that introduces a much newer and higher la layer of complexity over and above um, the store retailing. 
So I think it's fair to say there's probably been a few false dawns. Um, it wasn't the smoothest initial implementation of the platform, and probably the original app was, was pretty poor. Um, and about three months after I joined, we launched um, Missoni, and uh, you know the site crashed and was out for a whole day. Um, not the highlights of my career, I have to say. Um, and I've been pretty nervous today because we've actually launched um, Jean-Paul Gaultier as well. Um, and we've obviously learned our lessons because so far, so good. Um, so it's not been easy. Um, it's still really challenging. Um, but I'm pleased to say with the progress we've made so far, um, um, you know, we've still got a long way to go. But uh, I think what I did manage to bring to Target was some of that experience was bringing together business and IT. Um, I think that there's a lot of instances where they work separately in silos, but um, I've worked for a long time in that situation where we work together as one team, and I lead those areas uh, with a vision of the future customer journey. I think if there isn't alignment behind such a vision, uh, there's real danger of you know, delivering tech for tech's sake, um, and therefore you're likely to have this silo mentality. So with all that heritage, you know, it's been pretty critical to me to balance new thinking with the existing sort of deep understanding of Target operationally and, and its customer. I think digital transformation really is not out with the old and in with the new. It's about bringing together new thinking, new capabilities, and melding them into existing teams. Because you've got to remember those sort of existing teams know how to meet and exceed the customer's expectations. So I'm, I'm very lucky. Um, you know, I've got a really good blend of experience, Target and, and West Farmers team members, working with a small number of thought leaders who've maybe come from more advanced digital markets. In fact, you know, I now have product owners running agile teams, and all they've ever done is work in traditional store-based retailing. So it's a bit of a perfect blend and working pretty well. And, and what's been really, really satisfying for me is to see that transformation in the people. And that's really where it starts. And cause I really believe that if a modern day business leader, um, if, if terms like lean, agile, product teams, minimum viable products, um, sprints and scrums, you know, aren't part of your vocabulary, um, you know, you haven't really embraced the, dig the digital presence, <laughs> you know, let alone the future. So it really is in integral to how we take this business forward. So I touched on this briefly. Um, you know, but what has really struck me is that customers are deeply passionate about our brand. You know, they really want us to succeed, and it is a battle. Um, but they really want us to deliver. So it's hugely motivating for us, um, but it's absolutely devastating when we let them down. Um, so they're asking us to take the lead on um, range and on quality and fashion, um, but now they're looking more and more to us to help them to connect with, the, with our brand in the way that they want to. And I think we really value technology as an enabler for innovation. Um, as we know, it's going to generate growth, but we're, we're still on that journey to get everybody to understand that. Um, I think at the highest level, our digital transformation, um, keeping it simple, is about connecting customers to our product and doing that through devices, and at the same time, giving them a personalized experience which is based on data and on insight. I think what's really, really important for me is digital and technology are never going to be a substitute for stores, never going to replace great people on the sales floor. Um, they'll never replace some of the basics of picking and packing products, of sourcing, ranging products, merchandising, all these core elements which are required to be a successful retailer. But it's more about utilizing the mobile at the moment um, to create a connection between the brand and the customer, whilst also making shopping easier and much more convenient. So what's mobile? Um, Listen, it's not about responsive, it's not about adapted technology, it's not even really about apps. I think we all need to understand that the mobile is now really the remote control of our lives. Um, it's no longer a phone, yeah? it's actually a supercomputer, and it's in everybody's pocket. And we use it all day, every day, um, to get things done. Every single time you pick up that phone and you use it, um, Google have termed this quite well, actually. They, they, they class it and call it the micro moment. And there are literally millions and millions of those happening every single day. You know, see people in the room sort of doing it now. Um, the mobile gives you an opportunity to make your brand relevant to your customer in that micro moment. You have to have a presence at that time, otherwise you'll become irrelevant. 
And for me, it can connect all of your customers, um, all their, their touch points into one place in almost like a unifying strategy. I think what's important as well, customers do not think in channels. You know, they just really want to interact with the brand. They want it to be easy and convenient. So we shouldn't, as organizations, think in channels, which we still do. Um, hopefully, we're moving away from that. But you know, importantly, we need to be thinking about a customer-centric organization. So all of those things come together under the mobile. Um, and I think that uh, we can use this as much more of a connected experience um, going forwards. So my approach, really, to mobile has always been creating this connection. So between our customers and our brand, between our customers and the product, um, the store members that we have, the store team members and our customer, and really the data that we have, the data to be able to create a much more relevant and personalized experience. So I wanted to identify a way of getting Target into the pocket of every Australian. Um, you know, we're at 92%, I think, latest count penetration of smartphones, which is just in incredible. So, and also, the average Australian spends roughly 95% of their day with their mobile de device, no further than arm's reach away. Mine's on the table there, and I'm feeling a little bit, you know, stressed about it. So, <laughs> a bit far. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, we all have those moments when you're leaving the house and you say, oh, God, my God, where's my mobile? Have I got it with me? It's actually one of the first things people check now before a wallet. So critical to our lives, critical to our customers' lives. And I wanted to see how we could use the mobile to really act as the bridge um, between online and in-store experiences. So quite a lot in there, so much to do. We had to start prioritizing um, to, to start this journey. and. There's three sort of key areas we looked at. For our customers, you know, they just really want a great shopping experience. If it helps to achieve that, then it's got to be a winning idea. Yeah, for our business, um, frequency is our lifeblood. You know, we've got to remember that we're selling stuff that you know, people don't actually need to survive. Um, no disrespect, but it's a bit easier for grocers. If their customers don't eat, well, they die. So it's got to be easier to market that than our products. Um, to increase the frequency, you know, we really needed to increase the breadth of offer that, um, and, and awareness of the offer that we have um, to make us more relevant in more um, household expenditure and household shopping occasions. Um, we know that customers will shop with us more regularly if we can help them. We can help them complement their existing looks, if we can keep them relevant to latest trends. They'll keep coming back throughout the year. And finally, we know now um, that a customer who shops with us multiple ways, you know, across those so-called channels, um, we, they definitely have a significantly more value to us than a store-based only customer. Um, and most retailers around the world have, have sort of reiterated that and found that to, to be the same. And then finally, our team members, um, bringing together the teams um, to deliver something great. You know, we wanted to really challenge their perception of online introduce new ways of working, and really wanted to find ways to engage with them in digital um, and bring the organization closer together. So they were the three sort of uh, key objectives, and um, we've sort of started that journey. You know, and, and, and I will definitely have to acknowledge ThoughtWorks as well help in this. It has been a, a great partnership that we've worked together, and they haven't paid me to say that at all. I, I do generally think it's been a, in a very, very good relationship. Um, <laughs> But I've really noticed this year a significant reduction in the number of buzzwords. If you go back, there's been so many, you know, omnichannel, multi-channel, every single sort of channel you can imagine. Um, but you know, there has been a significant amount of money invested in digital globally. And those that have managed to integrate digital into just the way that they do business are really starting to create a competitive advantage. Those that have just implemented some you know, really cool stuff you know, they're, really, they're starting to lag behind. Uh, a good example of this is Barney's, actually. Barney's in New York um, invested in these connected restaurants so you could order from your table. Um, today, most of those lie dormant, and most of the staff in Barney's, they just complain about the fact that why is it the Nordstrom's and Macy's, their staff have got digital technology which is helping them do their jobs so much better. There's this sort of disconnect between what you're using technology for. So we're always trying to be connected uh, by doing the right thing for our customer and for our team members. 
Um, I think this quote from Ash, you know, he, he was the author of Running Lean. Um, I think it sums up pretty well. You know, life is way too short to build something nobody wants. So just before Christmas, we launched um, the first phase of our mobile vision. And uh, just to give you a bit of an understanding of what it looks like from a customer's perspective, there's a short video here, uh, which we launched just before Christmas uh, through social media channels. There's a lot to yay about with the new Target app, like being the first to see Target offers to redeem in-store and online, or even saving them for later. And what about extra inspiration? Absolutely! Shop the latest looks and styles from our Instagram feed or put your entire look together. Yay for home delivery! Or you can collect it from your Target store. Yay for nifty features like a catalogue wish list, a price scanner to see the latest price or product details, and a handy store finder to help you find your local store, check opening hours, and get contact details. Yay for making shopping at Target even easier. Download the Target app now. So it's quite good to see that because that was before Christmas. And actually, if you go to the app today, you'll see a huge number of new features that have been added to it. So we're constantly iterating and improving this, this inter integration. But you know, so what? An app, you say. You know, I, I think you know, what I'm thankful is that the customers really want it and they're interacting with it and using it. Um, you know, literally in a matter of months, um, you know, we've had two and a half million views of that catalog. Um, it's been launched well over two million times. And you know, we have unique visitors coming to look at the, the app you know, in five figures a day. Um, the Instagram ins in the inspiration feed that you saw there has been viewed uh, you know, over a million times. And in terms of screen time, you know, getting that in front of your customer, the amount of time that customers are spending looking at our, our screen and looking at Target is a lot of hours. Difficult to put a value on that, but that engagement is incredible. Um, in fact, um, if you'd had a baby and let it do nothing else but use the app for 24-7, um, that baby would now be 16 and a half years old. That much time being spent looking and interacting with your brand, all of it adds value to your organization. So overall, um, engagement across our mobile um, has definitely accelerated. Um, we've seen an improvement in conversion. Um, but it's important it wasn't really driven just by sales and driving turnover. It was more of an interactive tool. Uh, we're definitely engaging customers in new ways of buying online and the purchasing in stores, generating more value. Um, that you know, comes back to this whole sort of multi-channel, cross-channel customer, which is you know, somebody that interacts with us in a much more regular way, more frequently. They buy more and obviously drive sales. So we're pretty, pretty pleased. Um, as I say, early days and still more to do. So, um, what next? So there's obviously a few more quotes here of just uh, so the interaction and the response that customers have had. Um, so you know, overall, I think we're very comfortable with where we are. Um, so this is um, pretty important when going on this journey. You know, it is absolutely about your customer. You have to start with your customer. Um, you have to create something that really improves their lives and resolves a problem that they have. Never do tech for tech's sake. You know, during this process, we spoke to in depth to hundreds of customers, um, but we did it in an environment and that they were familiar with. I really wanted them to spend time, my team to spend time with the customers observing what they did whilst they're in the store. Um, you know, it picked up things like, well, customers are always collecting a product and going over to a price scanner and checking it and they didn't like it, they'd just dump it on the sales floor and it, you know, a behavior that that's happens in the store which actually has become quite habitual for target customers. And that really was a, a sweet spot um, for our customers and, and they're delighted when they use it and they're delighted when they see a price and they find a deal. Um, so it's really, really worked and, and you know, their children love the experience as well. What was great with this, the team members love it. So the people in the store constantly being asked for prices, and they normally have to go to a price scanner, which might be on the other side of the store. Now they're taking out their phone and they're scanning it and they're seeing the price of the product. It's actually fundamentally changed some of the policies in our stores. So we now encourage people to use their personal devices. Um, it's sort of changed our whole bring your own device policy um, and actively encouraging people to use it, whereas previously it was banned from the sales floor. So we really created something that improved our customers' um, experience, but also, you know, specifically whilst they were in store. That was the key focus of this um, activity. So the problems we were trying to solve, 
um, you know, it was quite easy to identify those, to be honest. We obviously wanted to help them shop. I uh, want our customers to make it as easy and as convenient as possible, and it's, you know, it's a pretty simple thing to use, our app. Um, we also wanted to give them a way to just waste their time, hopefully to inspire them um, and make them use some of those images they see much easier to attain. Um, and I think you know, not, not many other people can purchase individual product, products directly from the Instagram feed. And that, that seems to have worked um, and engaged extremely well with them. I wanted to give them access to everything going on in the brand, so almost like a one-stop shop, um, all things Target in one place. And we think all of these elements are the bits that are going to encourage our customers to share. So as soon as they start expanding and sending it to their friends, the, the better. So this was some of the research that we did. And one of the other things that we really learned in this sort of whole digital transformation is sometimes asking customers what they want, you know, that can actually be a terrible idea if you don't do it in the right way. Um, it always sticks with me. Henry Ford would have designed a much faster horse instead of the car if he listened to his customers. So it's getting that right balance. And we heard from our customers they wanted inspiration in their everyday lives. You know, feeling beautiful whilst balancing the pressures of being a working mum is actually really, really challenging. But when you ask them how can we help and how can digital help, um, they sort of reverted immediately back to functional requirements rather than that emotional connection. For example, um, on here you, know, you can see that inspiration was much lower down the ranking of what people thought would be useful for them in stores. But the reality is, when we asked them, um, they couldn't really picture what we meant. So, we had to bring it to life, and this was, this was great. The team worked in a lean way. It was great, sort of some of the examples we talked about earlier on this morning about experimentation, rapid prototyping, really showing customers the ways in which we could help them and help them be inspired. It was amazing to see the customers' response when they actually saw it. You know, when they, we videoed them and when they saw a prototype, they say, and, you know, capture those moments of delight, say, oh my God, I love that. You know, you, you know we're, we knew we were onto a good thing at that stage. So how they actually behave is very different to how they say they're going to behave. So doing this prototyping, showing our customers, really, really brought things to life. So one of our key concepts um, for mobile, and I think for any modern-day retailer, is, that, um, is to consider how to drive all parts of the customer lifecycle beyond just the transactions. You know, we really want to focus on emotions and get that connection going that will drive loyalty and drive frequency and drive repeat visits. So um, I think. As retailers, you know, we're pretty good at managing the start and the end of a customer journey. Um, we create awareness and we follow that right way through to transactions, um, but how sustainable is that ecosystem in the long term? So we wanted to create awareness um, and customers to download um, the app and keep coming back into store. So we needed to think about what was the moment of activation to keep them doing that. What makes them go, wow, that was great. I'm really going to keep that on my phone. I'm going to keep on using it. Um, we talk quite a lot internally about sort of creating stickiness. How do we get people to keep coming back to the app? Um, if it stays dormant on the phone, it's no use to anybody. Um, so it was a big, big part of our focus. And actually, the inspiration feed on the home page, seeing all the offers in one place, and actually things like the exclusive offers, um, you know, personalized offers that you get. Now, we also gave early access to uh, the Jean-Paul Gaultier um, range. We've never been able to do that before. It's always been kept behind closed doors and then the big reveal. But um, you know, a week and a half ago, we put the full range on the app. The only way you could see the, the JPG range was, was through the app. Um, so it created a real interest. And actually, people started favoriting, creating wish lists. We know what products were going to be successful. We've then been able to use that data to lay out the stores, to bring things to the front, which we know people are looking for. So you're starting to get that cross sort of fertilization of uh, data and knowledge. And so I would ask you all today, before it all sells out, just to quickly download the app and have a look and see what you can buy, because it's selling really, really well. So I'm actually delighted with today. In fact, this, a bit of an example here. It's not mine, actually. Um, but $49, JPG, absolutely fantastic. So uh, you really should be, <laughs> should be trying to buy this. I'm still a retailer at heart, so I just want to sell stuff, really. Um, so once we've, once we've done that, you know, we really want to try and retain our customers. And you're hopefully building that awareness. We can start to get into communities, start sharing, getting the word out there. You know, we haven't quite cracked that yet, but I think the JPG launch is probably the first example of that. You know, wish lists, favorites, starting to get people to send their emails to each other, their friends to start to share the experiences. So 
trying to think holistically, think about the whole end-to-end -end customer journey and customer lifecycle rather than just purely a transaction. Um, so we had to challenge the status quo as well. For example, you know, until a couple of months ago, our store team members um, were not allowed to bring their mobile on the sales floor, which I mentioned. But this photo here, it's, you can't see it that well, but um, it's our new, new Casey store. Um, and that's a celebration of each team member successfully downloading the app and celebrating it. I think that's incredible. Um, I'll put it into context. 18 months ago when I arrived, um, most retail teams, most store teams I went into, just saw online as a serious threat, saw digital as a serious threat. Um, they thought they would never recommend Target.com to any of their customers. They'd rather send them to a, customer, to a competition down the road than get in to buy online. Principle being, people will shop online, they won't come into my store, my sales will go down, the store will get closed. Now, worked really, really hard to understand that actually customers who can interact across all those channels are much more valuable. It actually drives more footfall frequency and transactions in stores. Um, you know, it's been quite a lengthy process, but you know, to see that was, was quite a moment to say, I think we're, we're starting the journey now, starting to transform. So um, I think it's possible if you, as long as you're always keeping in context the journey, both the digital transformation and the customer, Try and remove any handoffs between teams, create a cross-functional team. And what I'd like to say is get as many people inside the tent as possible, um, looking out, not sort of out looking in. Um, many of our store people were involved in the initial concepts that we did, some of the prototypes, some of the testing that they did with the customers in stores. Um, and then gradually, team members become your biggest advocates. They're the ones that start to sell your story. So use in the organization to sell it amongst themselves. And I think that helps with the whole transformation process. Um, the big step change was actually attributing these sales to the stores. Pretty mercenary bunch of people. Um, and you know, as long as they're getting the reward for it, then they will, they, will, they will work in the right way. So getting alignment of your KPIs, your measures, and your sales attribution has definitely helped with that transformation. People really need to see what's in it for them. I think it's important to note it's not just about the mobile. Um, you know, it is the whole organization thinking and behaving differently. Um, for a company the size of Target, that's no easy task. Um, you know, certainly haven't cracked it yet, but we're, we're on the journey. So um, to summarize, you know, I'm sure most of you in this room are thinking mobile first, but you know, that has been the heart of our strategy. Um, it is a unifying strategy for all things digital. Um, importantly, you know, customers really do not think in channels. They just want to interact with you as a brand. Um, and they want to, you re really need to make sure that organizations aren't thinking that in that way either. So use the mobile to connect all of your customer touch points and make sure you solve problems to make life easier for customers. Um, but you shouldn't stop there. It's not just about solving a problem. It's actually how do you introduce those moments of delight um, to ensure those customers keep coming back and you maintain that stickiness and uh, use of the app or whatever technology you're using. Um, I think this can only be achieved, really, if you, if you do get into the real world. You, know, you actually get out and observe and see what's going on. Don't do it as a desktop exercise. You have to interact with your customers so you understand you're delivering something that they really want and actually suits them. I think under no circumstances focus on creating something world class. I think a lot of people want to have something which is leading edge and brand new and all that and PRable. Um, but for me, you know, it has to be world class for your customers. It has to be world class for what's right for you and your customers, not necessarily what's right for the world. I think if you do that, you know, I guarantee um, your customers will have a reason to share their experience and return again and again and again. And I think your digital transformation uh, will therefore begin. So what's next? Um, if I'm honest, I'm not really sure. Um, can't really guarantee it, apart from the fact that the current device of choice um, to manage our lives is definitely the mobile. I think that's going to be here for a while. I think what I do know is that our overarching connected retail strategy will create a relevant and personalized experience for our customers. Um, I think that will help them interact and consume from our brand. Um, we need to make sure we as an organization remain or become even more customer centric. We are still a little bit too channel centric, so how do we continue to make that transition? Um, but we are focused on lots of other things. You know, it is the mobile, it's multi-site fulfillment, you know, data-driven customer engagement, all the digital marketing um, and the communities that we're trying to create. 
And it's all underpinned as well by you know end-to-end -end business operating model, and all those processes now need to integrate digital into them, so it supports across the whole organisation. So I think the future is pretty difficult to pre um, predict, but what I can say is that we're quite well set up. So whatever develops and whatever does happen, I think we are going to be quick to respond. And as long as we're quicker than the competition, that's all that really matters to me at the moment. And you know, on that basis, we will definitely design whatever comes next um, with our customers and with our team members um, as, a t as, as a group. Um, so about the future, I'm not really sure. I think there is a saying that sticks with me is that your biggest competitor is your own view of the future. And for me, that means we're, we are totally open to ideas. You know, we're going to have to adapt, evolve, um, and respond to what our customers expect. And what I've just got to make sure to try and do is bring our customers and our channels much closer together. And as part of um, our digital transformation, it's much more about moving from a traditional omni-channel experience um, to simply the target experience. Thank you very much.